Okay, we're going to take a look at different levels of detail for trees. If you don't know terminology, the boxes are called nodes, and for more than that, you can Google it or look at some of my previous writing. So we have a project here, Making Cereal, and it is divided into child node, gut stuff, or cleanup. This is a standard project. You have the name of the project, and then you have the steps. So when people write out a list of steps for a project, they're making a tree that's like this. There is one list of steps and then one parent, which is the project itself. But you can look at other levels of detail. For example, we can expand gut stuff, and we're getting cereal, milk, bowl, and spoon. And you can collapse it again. So you can look at different levels of detail. And you should be able to do this not just with software, but mentally. You should understand that gut stuff has things under it, but you don't always have to think about them or pay attention to them. The ability to look at them when you need the extra detail and also hide them when you don't need it is really, really important to just thinking in general. Because you have so much knowledge in your head and it needs to be organized and you need to be able to focus your attention in the right places. So any step you can go into more detail or less detail. So we can take gut spoon and we can add new detail. We can add another layer under it. Um, find utensil drawer. Look through jumble of utensils to find a spoon. Um, pick up spoon. Uh, it's running into other stuff. Okay, so we'll move it over here a bit. So now we have more detail on gut spoon, but we can hide it. You know, we don't have to pay attention to this level of detail. Most of the time, we don't want to pay attention to this level of detail. We already know how to get a spoon. Um, our stuff's not even in, in a jumble, and we know where the utensil drawer is, so it's all really easy. So we hide it, and you can hide the whole thing. See? So you can have an entire subtree, so we can go into more detail. Um, move hand to spoon. Grasp spoon with fingers. Move hand out of drawer. And then we can take one of these, and we can add more detail. Like, bend first knuckle of fingers. I don't even know if this is right, because I've never really thought about how to use your fingers in detail. I don't have that explicit. Um, you know, I can do it, but I don't actually know the right steps in the right order. I'd have to, like, videotape myself and look at it or something. Or maybe watch myself do it. Sometimes if you're watching yourself, it's hard to do something while watching simultaneously. So video is easier, because then you just do it normally while the videotape is running. And then you can review it in slow motion. Anyway, bend, bend second knuckle of fingers, and then bend thumb. Like, I don't know that that's right necessarily, but that, that is a way of attempting to retract your hand to close it around something. So you can go into more and more levels of detail. And like even this, it could be like, um, unconsciously think you want to bend your thumb, uh, send nerve impulse from brain to thumb, and thumb bends, or thumb muscles activate and it bends. So you can go many, many levels of detail, but we don't want all this. So, but sometimes you do want detail, sometimes it's useful. So you want to be able to understand what the details are that you're leaving out and which ones would actually be useful. And part of how you do that is you practice and you get experience. So you do a bunch of different projects and write down different levels of detail. And then you compare that to your life and what you actually find useful when you're doing things or when you're giving people instructions, or when you imagine it in your head and try to follow the steps. There's different ways to do it, but you see what actually works and what is completely useless and distracting. And you want to get experience with that. And you already have some experience with that, but uh, you need to practice it a bit more in relation to actual trees 
so that you can learn it in a more clear, verbal, in words, uh, conscious way. So we're going to take the spoon and we're going to hide it again. Because we don't need all that detail. So making cereal is a project that consists of three subprojects. And the first subproject consists of four subprojects. And this the subproject get spoon consists of three subprojects. And then this one, pick up spoon, consists of three subprojects. And then this next one, grasp spoon with fingers, consists of three subprojects. And then bend thumb consists of three subprojects. And that's pretty normal that you divide things. You don't want to have 50 subprojects under one thing. Um, you don't want a very long list. It's usually good if a project has around two to five steps. And sometimes you can go up to like 10. But if you're going over that, you probably need sublevels. You need more layers. OK, so you can zoom. When you go into more detail, you're zooming in. You're focusing your attention. And so one of the things you can do also is you can take a subproject like pick up spoon. I'm gonna hit copy, and then I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna paste it, and now we have pick up spoon as its own project, completely by itself. Right? We got rid of the other project and we detached it. So now pick up spoon is the whole project. You can take any subtree, any sub portion of your tree, and just separate it and view it as a project by itself. And then you can go to it and do a collapse within it, or whatever you need. <laughs> So now here's the pickup spoon as a simple basic project with the project name and the steps within it. So when you do a large complex project, what you do is you take a bunch of small sub projects like this and you're combining them together. So now we're going to look at zooming out where you're reducing the level of detail or um, looking at bigger picture things. So we have making breakfast is a bigger picture project than making cereal. So I'm going to copy the cereal. I'm going to paste it under breakfast, and then I'm going to collapse it. So you see making breakfast has making cereal as one sub-step, and we could do some of the other sub-steps. So there's eating food. There's shower. Oh, no, this is making breakfast. I was thinking morning routine, but that's the next one. Oh, and it says making breakfast. So you shouldn't even eat it as part of making breakfast. So we'll have... um getting uh yeah making oj making toast so now we have our breakfast cereal oj toast and then we can go to our morning routine and this is an even bigger project and making breakfast is one sub project and it has other steps like eating breakfast shower shave And you can keep zooming out even more. Your morning routine project is, in fact, a sub-project that you use in other projects like your day. So morning routine is now part of your day. Um, and there's not only one possible parent project. You can take the same project and use it in multiple different places. So making breakfast was part of our morning routine. But it's also going to be part of our restaurant job. So here we have restaurant job. And we've put making breakfast under it. So making breakfast is a component project, a sub project that can be used in multiple larger projects like your morning routine or your restaurant job. So we've gone in a different direction. The morning routine was part of my day. The restaurant job could also be part of your day. But I was going to put it under life. So we're going to take the morning routine, and that's part of your life. And you have the restaurant job, and that's also part of your life. So now we have like a, a really high level project and we can collapse things again and be like, okay, my life has my morning routine and my restaurant job. Probably has a few other things. Um, evening routine. So that's what you do. You have your morning routine, you go to work, and then you have your evening routine, and then also weekends. So whenever you do a project, <laughs> whenever you're writing down a project, you should consider 
what could it be a subproject of? What is a higher level that's more zoomed out and lower detail? And also, um, how could you take the steps in your project and break them down into more detail? And then you have to consider what is the appropriate level of detail for my goal? What are you trying to accomplish? And then what levels of detail will actually be useful for that? You can always do too much detail or too little detail. You can zoom in too, too much or zoom out too much. So it's a judgment call. You have to get experience. You have to practice. And part of doing that is being able to judge when you're successful so that you learn the right things, not the wrong things. Like you have to be able to tell, is this working in order to improve your intuition about it and improve your judgment. So that gets into another topic I've talked about a bunch of uh, a, lar a major way to think about learning is you learn how to judge your work at some topic, and then you build on that so you can judge your work and uh, self-evaluate at more and more topics. So you can think of learning as building up your ability to check your, whether you're right or not, check for success. If you can't judge success very well, then you haven't learned it fully, properly, appropriately. Anyway, the main point was about zooming in and zooming out and how that relates to trees. So this is something you can practice and work on. You need to practice it in the abstract. Um, just how do you do it with trees in general? Uh, you could even use just fake trees with like letters for the nodes. Every load is, node is one letter. You could have the A tree and its children could be B and C and D. Anyways, you can practice like that. And then once you're more comfortable with that, you practice with um, actual projects that you want to do. Um, you can start with ones that you're just considering or like simple examples like breakfast. And then you can move on to like two things you're actually going to do that are not trivial for you. You work your way up towards harder things from easier things. But don't rush to the later steps. Because people usually they're like, well, I did it three times and it worked. Therefore, I can move on. But that means when you're paying full attention and you recently learned it and remember it all, you can do it. But you need to actually practice it more than that to get it down, make it routine and really easy and doesn't take your attention and you won't forget it and so on. That takes more practice. So don't move on too early. The practice, it shouldn't be super hard. Um, if practice is really hard, that means you're working on something that's too hard. So it should be pretty easy to just do a bunch of practice if you're doing things at the appropriate level. If something is hard to practice, then either you're not ready for it yet, um, and you need to learn other things first, or you need to understand it better. Like, you either need to go back to something easier, or you're not fully understanding how it works and how to do it right. Because once you fully understand it, it shouldn't be that hard anymore. At least not, like, mentally hard, thinking hard. Okay. Good luck um, working on your trees and your zoom in, zoom out. And ask any questions if you have them.